Hello everyone, today we're going to read chapter 12, Going to Court. Around the mid-1880s, San Francisco had 320 laundries. Most of the laundries, 240 of them, were owned by citizens of China. Why were there so many laundries? Why did the Chinese own most of them? Why were the Chinese citizens of China and not of the United States? Well, here are some answers. The first had to do with sexism. California had a large male population. It was mostly men who had come to California to dig gold. Traditionally, in Europe and America, women were expected to wash clothes. Most American men would not wash their own clothes. But Chinese men were willing to wash clothes, and it took very little money to open a laundry. According to the Constitution, anyone born in the United States is a citizen, no matter where he or she comes from. So why didn't the Chinese become citizens of the United States? A law passed back in 1790 said that only white people could become naturalized citizens. The law had been aimed at African-born persons. As it turned out, that old law was applied only to Asians. So the law existed, but it was only applied to Asians. Even today, many countries do not let people of other ethnic backgrounds become citizens. In the 19th and 20th centuries, Americans struggled with the idea of citizenship. What makes a citizen? Were women citizens? The freedom and openness of the United States was unusual. It still is. Most 19th century people thought that made our country special, but some people didn't like that idea at all. Here we have a scary scene in Denver, Colorado in 1880. The Chinese were willing to work for low wages. One employer said, I find this difference, the China man will stay and work. But the white man, as soon as he gets a few dollars, will leave. A person who is born in another country and who then comes here takes out citizenship papers and he becomes a citizen. It's a naturalized citizen. So only Asians were prevented from becoming those naturalized citizens. And an ordinance is another word for a law. Usually it's a local law. All right, so that law was applied to Asians, keeping out Asians from becoming citizens. But that wasn't enough for the racists. They got mean-spirited laws passed to try to put the Chinese launders out of business. A San Francisco ordinance said that all laundries must be placed in brick buildings. The law seemed to make sense. Laundries used fires to heat water and the fires could spread rapidly in a city where the houses and stores mostly built of wood were crowded together but then fire was used to heat and cook in almost every building in the city of the 320 laundries in san francisco 310 were wood buildings the sheriff a man named hopkins arrested almost all the chinese owners of the laundries he arrested only one of the white laundry owners. That laundry was owned by a woman. What kind of prejudice was that? Sheriff Hopkins did not bother the 79 white men who ran the laundries. The Chinese laundry owners went on trial and were convicted and fined. If they didn't pay the fines, they were sent to jail. Their businesses were closed. Was there anything they could do? Remember, they weren't citizens. One of the men Sheriff Hopkins arrested was the owner of Yik Wo Laundry. The firewood and wardens had inspected the Yik Wo Laundry and certified that it was in good condition. If you decide to be a lawyer, you would go to law school. You will probably study the case of Yik Wo versus Hopkins. Here is something the law books won't tell you. There never was a Yik Wo. Sheriff Hopkins made a mistake. He assumed that man who owned Yik Wo Laundry was named Yik Wo. Actually, his name was Lee Yik. We don't know much about Lee Yik, except that he came to California in 1861 and operated a laundry for 22 years. 
We also know that he was willing to fight for his rights. But what were his rights? He wasn't a citizen. Did he have the same rights as if he had been an American citizen? No one was sure. After he was arrested in 1886, Li Yik went to other Chinese launderers. He persuaded them to help him hire a good lawyer. If he could get a verdict in his case changed, it would affect them all. They appealed his case. Do you know what that means? Here's an explanation of what an appeal is and a basic idea of how our judicial system works. It may come in handy. Most people go to court at some time in their lives. To begin, there are two kinds of law cases, civil and criminal. Suppose you buy an expensive bicycle, take it home, and it isn't what you expected. You feel cheated. The bike dealer doesn't agree. He thinks you got what you paid for. He won't take the bike back. If you can't settle the argument, you can go to court. You can sue the bike seller. It will be a civil case. No criminal laws have been broken. It will probably be a judge who decides who is right, you or the bike dealer. However, in most cases, civil or criminal, you have the right to a jury trial. A jury is a group of citizens, ordinary people, who listen to the evidence and decide what will happen. They decide if someone is wrong or guilty of breaking a law. Then in civil cases, the jury decides the penalty. In criminal cases, if a person is convicted, the judge usually decides on the proper penalty. The Yikwo case was a criminal case. It was about a, a San Francisco law. The case began in a local San Francisco court. We have local, state, and federal courts. Lee Yik was a defendant, the person on trial. The other side, the San Francisco authorities, were prosecuting the case. They were the prosecutors. The judge and the jury heard arguments by lawyers from both sides. They called witnesses, people who had information about the case. The jury decides on the facts of the case. The judge decides what law applies to the case. This drawing is from the 1880s, and it depicts the justices of the United States Supreme Court hearing a case. Lee Yick's lawyer called the safety inspectors, but the law was clear. And as you know, the San Francisco jury said that the Chinese launderers had broken the law. Lee Yick had to pay a fine or go to jail. After a decision is made, a case may be appealed to a higher court. Lee Yick lawyers appealed. The case went to the California Supreme Court. Appeals courts do not hear witnesses. They do not have juries. They aren't like courts you see on TV. The job of an appeals court is to review the lawyer's arguments and see if a law has been applied properly in the lower court. The appeals court asks, has justice been served? The California Supreme Court agreed with the lower court. It said that the decision in Yik Wo versus Hopkins was correct. The Chinese laundries were in wooden buildings and wooden laundries were illegal. You can imagine how Lee Yik and his friends felt. They thought the city of San Francisco was being unfair. White laundry owners were running laundries in wood, wooden buildings. Why was the city picking on Chinese laundrymen? Lee Yik decided to take his case to the highest appeals court of them all, the United States Supreme Court. The Supreme Court doesn't listen to all the cases that people want it to hear. It couldn't possibly do that. It selects cases carefully. It tries to pick cases that will test important issues, especially constitutional issues. There were two issues in the case. The first was this. Do the police have the right to enforce a law arbitrarily? It means inconsistently, not in the same way to everybody every time. The second issue has to deal with the rights of non-citizens. Should the law treat aliens, people who aren't citizens, the same way it treats American citizens? This was an important case. Police departments in many states were interested. They didn't want their power limited. They wanted the power to treat aliens, those non-citizens, as they wished. Briefs, which were written 
legal arguments were presented to the Supreme Court by Nebraska, Iowa, Indiana, Mississippi, New Jersey, Wisconsin, and Florida. They were all in support of Sheriff Hopkins. Can you guess what happened? The sheriff and the states lost the argument. The Chinese laundrymen beat them. This is what the Supreme Court said. For no legitimate reason, this body, by its action, has declared that it is unlawful for 80-odd persons who are not subjects of China to wash clothes for hire in wood frame buildings, but unlawful for all subjects of China to do the same thing. It was a, a law applied with an evil eye and an unequal hand. That said the justices was wrong. And said this in court. The 14th Amendment to the Constitution is not confined to protect citizens. It says, nor shall any de state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor deny any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of laws within its jurisdiction. That meant that all persons in the United States, citizen or not, are entitled to the same fair treatment. Lee Yick and his friends had won a momentous victory.